Yo, what's good everyone? It's your boy. Welcome back. Another video, baby. Today, we got a guest upload. My boy, Yassine. Straight from Montreal, Ottawa, Canada. Let's go. Ritual, baby. Let's go. And on top of that, you tell you to do. So it's twice the greatness, twice the fun. Let's get started. Before we do, I want you guys to smash the subscribe button. Not just on my channel, but also my boy Yassine's channel. Go check it out down below. Master of deck building and combos right there. Also, make sure to smash the like button. And don't forget that despite the fact that Pen Best Deck, you're all the best decks in my eyes. I love you all. All right, let's get started in the video. Let's go. Also, right before we get into this video, I do want to mention that coaching is still available for a limited time only. So check it out down in the description. And on top of that, baby, check out the people on Trip Gaming Play Mats on TripGaming.com because they're absolutely scrumptious. Go check it out. And I'm gonna hand it off to Yassine. Let's go. Do you think I'm invisible? <laughs> I actually love that song. Anyways, whoa, what's going on? My name is not Steven, it's Yasin, and I'm going to not show you guys how to play Metal Force today, but Virtual World, yes, well, we're actually going to not use Pendulum Scales for like the first time in history, but whatever. Steven basically told me, you know what, can you break the deck for me? I was like, you, you know what, you already know it, say no more. And before we get into anything video related, make sure you subscribe to Steven's channel, he's the GOAT, and after that, maybe consider going to my channel, Yasin656, for more combo videos, deck profile, card reviews, testing, etc. And let's get right into it. Okay, so I'm going to only show you guys one combo alongside the deck profile. So, of course, as you can see, my hand is pretty good. I have Lulu with Lili, Gamma, which is just one discard at the end of the day. It's not really Gamma. And we also have uh, Lost Wind, which is really nice in this situation. You're going to see why soon enough. But yeah, we're going to go normal Lulu and then special Lili. Our opponent has Nibiru, but we're like way too cool to get nibiru And we go for the double Foolish Burial, Chuche. Make Lulu level 6 and we also going to be, uh, we're going to be searching our Lulu, but that uh, this time will be special summon itself so not like a, a wasted lulu on your normal summon and now you're going to be revealing the lulu so send this one who to search the kowloon and you're going to make tzulkin and then after that uh set kowloon in order to summon crystal wing and uh, yeah this was summon number five so nibiru just doesn't do jack here and then when you flip that uh, kowloon you're going to be activating chuche from your deck this one who affect grave revive back the lili and discard one card so very similar to king long it's not like chuche that is kind of free these two cards since they generate you like physical advantage you do have to kind of compensate to buy discarding one card after that which is kind of unfortunate but without these uh, kind of drawbacks the cards would be a, a little too overpowered but yeah discard the gamma or whatever discard you have it doesn't matter and then you're going to be synchro summoning for shen shen so we didn't have access to muddy mud dragon in this instance but it doesn't matter because this ultima yadzalkin is actually going to be generating you card advantage literally <laughs> you're going to see why but yeah you're going to pass turn here we didn't go for gg so no end phase scarm scarm from the grave but yeah, as soon as our opponent summons from the extra deck look at this not only do we get back the lost wind but we set a card during the opponent's turn. So that's going to trigger the Tzulkin and we're going to summon another Crystal Wing. <laughs> yeah, imagine. Th this is just so sick, man. Not only do we not lose the Nibiru, we got back a Lost Wind. We still have a Tzulkin that can't be targeted for attacks or card effects. We have double freaking Crystal Wing with Chuche and Shen Shen. And all that is actually a pretty easy uh, combo to achieve and you still have another card in your hand. That's Maryland, Ma Maryland, Merry Christmas, Happy Land City for you. Not for your opponent, but whatever. Let's get into the deck profile now. Okay, this is the deck profile. So as you can see, a lot of variety in the monsters that you're playing. Huh? <laughs> yeah, there's like no innovation for the virtual world deck. I mean, all the deck lists are always the exact same. It's just sometimes there are like some very minor differences. For example, some people are playing two Nyan Nyan with one two two. There's a very good argument to play the two two. Basically, it's uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, uh, if I can actually spell. Okay, yeah. So if you control no monsters or all monsters you control are psychic and or worm, you can normal summon discard without tributing if this card is in your grave. You can discard one psychic or worm. By the way, all the virtual world monsters are psychic and worm. That's why, uh, is a, yeah. Spe so special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. Also, you can you can only summon level or slash rank three or higher monsters for the rest of the turn. So in other words, this deck doesn't really utilize Anaconda very well. So that's why the way you make Dragoon is actually by fusing with uh, Muddy Mud Dragon because this kind of has like a, a weird polymerization-esque effect on the field. It only fuses with monsters on the field. And also, in case you're wondering, well, how do you... How 
I don't see how you summon Dragoon. Muddy Mud Dragon, on top of having that polymerization esque effect and being a level 6 generic synchro, which is just so incredibly convenient, it also happens to be a substitute for any material that is listed specifically on the fusion monster that you're trying to make. So you can kind of substitute it as Dragon, uh, sorry, Dark Magician, and then all you really need after that is the one Dragon Effect monster, and Soulkin just happens to be one Dragon Effect monster. So this is why Dragoon of Red Eyes is there, even though you cannot make Anaconda. I mean, even with uh, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, Anaconda would still not really be played. You would only be playing three Fusion Destiny with two Malicious and uh, the other card, uh, the Denier or something. Anyways, back to uh, my Virtual World lineup. I think 15 is just all you really need. I wouldn't really go and play 2-2. I don't think it's really uh, uh, optimal, but yeah, for 15 Virtual World monsters, absolute perfection. And then for the Hand Shops, we're playing 9. So yeah, I wish Driver, man, you freaking Summon Skull. Actually, worse than Summon Skull. It has zero defense. Like, bro, this, is, this card's so bad. Just Yugi bricked on that in the anime. But yeah, shout outs to Nerd Factor. Really good at drawing these cards, but even when you draw like multiple bad cards in this deck, it's actually not the end of the world because they're just going to be the discard fodder for your King Long and Zwan Hu anyway. So yeah, who gives a shit? Like, Desires into Double Desires is almost like a good thing. <laughs> like, I want it to happen, you know? But not, not always, but sometimes. Sometimes, but not all the time. That's pretty much it for the majority of the deck. And then three Kalu, no shit. You want, a, you want your deck to be as consistent and powerful as possible. Three Desires. Okay, now some people might like genuinely ask why you're not playing Pot of Prosperity. I actually think it's not that great. It conflicts with a lot of cards in your strategy. Like it conflicts with Charge Warrior and Coral Dragon because you can't draw like the turn use Pot, Pro Pot of Prosperity, which is like really bad. And your extra deck for the most part is actually really useful. And Pot of Desires, yeah, sure, even though you're banishing 10 cards, it looks like really expensive. Nyan Nyan has a really neat effect where when it's banished, you get to shuffle back one of your banished cards into the deck. Really easy to banish, by the way. Just when it revives back itself from the graveyard, because you summon the level 3 or higher monster, it gets banished while it leaves the field. So yeah, pretty pretty good uh, synergy right there. Synergy. <laughs> synergy. But yeah, when called by the grave, no cross out. I actually don't recommend it. You would have to kind of resort to playing like shitty ratios of hand traps, like one Nibiru, one Lancia, and like sketchy things in the main deck, and I'm not really down for that. So nah. Two emergency teleport. I think this is just so sick, man. It's a step into the right direction because this deck only loses to itself. It doesn't really lose to anything else in the meta. Like yeah, it's not really like Charbrigade that actually has a really bad matchup against uh, Brandish, Sky Striker. This deck doesn't really have any bad matchups unless your opponent is like randomly that one guy playing Mind Drain, but <laughs> I mean, come on. But yeah, two emergency teleport is good, man. We're definitely looking forward to seeing this card at three. If this changes nothing on the metagame, we maybe could eventually go to three, but emergency teleport-esque cards like quick launch and stuff like that that aren't once per turn, they're usually kind of not really destined to stay a three for too long, but yeah, quick launch actually was, uh, yeah, I can't believe the card is still three. Now, finally, we have three King Long, double Chuche, one Zwan who also don't re really recommend playing Foolish Barrel Goods. It kind of is, um, I don't know, diminishing return value, whatever, when you have like that and your combo, and it doesn't really get your engine started like immediately on its own. It's also not a plus one because you go Foolish Goods, send your King Long, so you're down from five to four cards, and then you go King Long, search whatever Lulu or something. So search, so you're up back to five cards, but then you have to discard one card. Like you might as well just play cards like Desires and stuff like that. I feel like there's barely anything that you can innovate on. You really have to play those hand traps so you can make sure that you always have a chance going second. But yeah, this main deck, there is practically nothing you can do about it. I want to say it's like as optimal as it gets, but obviously there is always going to be a few tweaks that you're going to be able to do like here and there. But yeah, uh, for the extra deck now, we have Dragoon or Invoke Kaliga if you're short on budget. But you can actually argue that Invoke Kaliga is better than Dragoon. This is also something that I explained in my own video because uh, I already kind of made a deck profile on my own channel. It's no like less in depth than the video that I made. So don't worry if you haven't watched my video that you're not really missing out on anything. Is that maybe the combos, but that's not really relevant. Yeah, Invoke Kaliga, just a great option, and yeah, you don't really have to play Dragoon. Uh, Ultimate at Zulkin with Shen Shen, Vermilion Dragon Mech, Crystal Wing. If you want to play the Lost Wind route, you could actually maybe cut some hand traps and then maybe main deck three Lost Wind. So you could play, I don't know, two Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon with, I don't know, what, Void Ogre Dragon or Black Rose Moonlight Dragon. So when you set your Lost Wind during your opponent's turn, the Zulkin effect would trigger to summon Black Rose and then bounce back a monster your opponent controls to the hand. It could be a good option, but definitely not needed. Anyways, Juju, Coral Dragon with Starter Charge Warrior. These two cards are really similar. They pretty much have the same effect, but this is a non-tuner and this is a tuner. So this is like the only thing that you really have to remember. And on top of drawing one card, like each, this is on summon and this is, is when it's sent from the field to the grave. They all have like rel relatively relevant effects. So Coral Dragon, you can discard one card and target one card your opponent controls, destroy it. And Charge Warrior is like a Ashura Priest. So you can attack all monsters your opponent controls, uh, all special summon monsters only uh, once each. So it's not too bad. And Muddy Mud Dragon, I'll re-explain that. So nothing new here. Zeus, Talmium 7, Fan Fan. This is like a 
uh, it's so hard to kind of explain, but it's it's a really good card. But unfortunately, the effect of summoning two virtual world monsters from the deck is only when it's destroyed by an opponent's attack or opponent's like card effect. So it's kind of hard to ensure that you can trigger this. But the effect on the field to like bounce, uh, well, I mean, shuffle or banish cards in your opponent's graveyard and field is just great. Unfortunately, it does target, but you do have a lot of non-targeting removal like Zeus and stuff like that in this deck. So yeah, Beatrice, this is like for post game one when you're going first, you get to foolish for Necro World Banshee to activate Zombie World. Where is it here? Or you can foolish for uh, Nail Shadow Ariel to triple DD Crow from your opponent's graveyard. Downward Magician and Fortune Tune. This card cannot be targeted on the field with card effects. And if it would be destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can detach one material from this card instead. So this is just a way to ensure that you can go into Zeus, even if your opponent has a, I don't know, Torrential or Imperm and stuff like that. And then you can go into Downward Magician. Yeah, still make your uh, Zeus with four materials and then use the effect twice. So pretty cool stuff here. And now for the side deck, yeah, <laughs> if this is a side deck even. So one Nibiru Triple Lance, yeah, this card is going to be so good, this format. Uh, a lot of more people are going to play uh, Tri Brigade and Virtual World, since there are probably some of the least hit deck. Well, Drytron as well, man. Literally nothing happened with Drytron, like one Ava. <laughs> nice, uh, nice, big deal, man. People were playing one Ava anyways. One Banshee, one Ariel, one Harpy's Feather Duster. Just be good at the game and draw the freaking card. Uh, triple Cosmic Cycle, one, one Zombie World, double Anti-Spell, Imperial Order, and Red Reboot. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, make sure you like this video and subscribe to Steven's channel and maybe consider going on my channel to see what kind of content I make. And that's pretty much all I had to say. Thank you for watching and I will maybe see you guys soon. Peace.